Buzz, we're getting close to the election. We've been talking with several members of Congress around the country, and, but unfortunately I have not been able to interview my own member of Congress because I'm represented by Sheila Jackson Lee in the 18th Congressional District. So I thought today we'd come and talk to Colonel Sean Siebert, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Siebert, yes. who uh, served our country in Afghanistan and uh, Bosnia, over in Europe, uh, Guatemala, throughout the United States, yes. Well, Colonel, I want to thank you first for your service to our Colonel nation Blazer. as a member of the Army and then also for your willingness to get out and campaign. You know, the campaign trail is a grueling event anyway, and then this year has been even harder because of the what the judges did to us in the primaries and uh, all right. you know, extended it's been, the primary out. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, it's a great opportunity to be out here to talk to your audience. And yes, the redistricting, what the judges have done, has made it a very difficult aspect for the, for the candidates because we have to educate the voters that they are now in new districts. For example, in the 18th district, it's expanded up past 1960 up into the Cypress Wood area. Uh, I can't tell you how many people from Spring have called me up and said, you know, you left a door hanger on my door and I'm in Ted Poe's district, uh, please come pick it up, call them back, talk to them, and they're like, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. And I also remind them that Ted Poe is my mentor, the one who got me into this. Mm -hmm. So it's been a big educational thing. I think the Republicans are doing a lot better than the Democrats in educating the voters on how the districts have districts have changed. You know, it's interesting. I moved into a new place last year mm -hmm. after the legislature had redrawn the lines thinking that I was going to be moving into Ted Poe's district, but the federal judges, when they redrew the lines, they said, no, Bob, not quite. They took this little line, went out there and grabbed me and pulled me back into Sheila's district. So yes. um, I'm hoping it's not going to be Sheila's district after next Tuesday and that uh, you will be our, our next Congressman for the 18th Congressional. Well, thank you. We, based on what we're seeing come from people coming out of the polls, it seems very good that we have a very good chance to make this a very close race. Um, we have people in the Acres Home working for us that have been out there campaigning for the past three months. We've been advertising in the minority markets on their radio. We've been hitting the Spanish-speaking radio, and also been going door to door, doing block walks with independent voters, get them out, educate them. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of people coming out of the polls that are saying they voted for us. Mm -hmm. And even when we're talking there on the, in the polling place, as a matter of fact, I was at Acres Home, the polling place yesterday, and the Sheila person handing out the Sheila placard, by the way, it's just a piece of paper, her picture saying, elect Sheila Jackson Link, nothing more. Mm -hmm. She's going on name recognition only. Where mine has this nice little card that tells you what I'm going to do. Her supporter actually says she's going to vote for me. Really? Because she liked what she, we <clears> took <throat> both cards and said, well, I like what you, have, what you stand for. And you're mm -hmm. out here, you're actually out here shaking the hands, talking to people. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're like. And they want to change, but they want the Republican to come out there and talk to them. Because one person told me in Third Ward, we don't vote Democrat all the time, but we won't vote somebody we don't know. So if you don't come talk to us and you don't come advertise to us and come meet us, we won't vote for you because we don't know who you are. And so we've been trying to engage that. So it's looking pretty positive. Why did you decide to run for Congress? Well, I came back from Afghanistan, had uh, Ted Poe contacted me after he saw my resume and had a conversation. And he talked me into running, and it's about our future. Mm -hmm. Our children and grandchildren are about to inherit a debt in a country that is not what you and I grew up in. And I'm in this for the people and for the future of our children. And that's the main reason I'm running. And of course, when Ted suggests I go against Ms. Jackson Lee, hey, that's a challenge, I'm going to take it on. Because the people deserve the best representation, and she's not providing that representation. Do you know in the past quarter, she's missed almost 50% of the roll call votes? Mm -hmm. She has the highest record for missing votes since she came into office in 1994. She's at 6%, normally the medium is 2.8%. Well, she's probably trying to figure out when the next celebrity's funeral is going to be. So Could be. Go give some kind of presentation yes. to yeah. her. That. And on that, one of the things my campaign we've said is we will not go negative against her mm -hmm. and we've decided look the way you win is not go negative against the other person but educate the population mm -hmm. the voters about what who you are and what our campaign stands for mm -hmm. as a matter of fact i got a check one day from a donor that wanted me to do some negative advertising he mm -hmm. said i'll give you these three thousand dollars to do negative advertising and i said no thank you sir here's your money back mm -hmm. we don't do negative here we run a positive campaign and this is for the voters and the voters deserve better than negativity. Well, let me ask you this. A lot of people feel like this district was drawn to be a, a minority representative yes. district to keep Sheila in in this seat. 
and that by running against her and running a very credible race against her, mm -hmm. which you've done, uh, that that will motivate her voters to come out and support her, which could hurt, hurt other down ballot candidates. What some people call kicking the ant bed. Basically. Yeah. And what do you what? How do you reply to that? Well, first of all, you know the national committee has named us a young gun because they think our campaign is credible, viable, and can win. I just told you about my campaign manager got selected by the uh, Young Federation of Federation of Young Republicans as being one of the most influential young Republicans in Houston to go up to Pittsburgh to campaign for Romney. Mm -hmm. So the National Party has seen that we're credible and we have influential people. The other thing is, in the Democratic side of the House, they, there's about one third that want her gone. Mm -hmm. And I look at it, you know, where do you draw that cut line? Do you draw it at the sheriff's race? Because the 18th district takes up one fourth of Houston. Mm -hmm. And what we've done then, sure, when she starts trying to kick that ant hill, we were out there, any event I have, I bring judges out there. I talk about the downtrace ballot. Matter of fact, uh, these two individuals, we, I've gone in to work with them, with Dorothy and Juliet, mm -hmm. who are on down ballots, and I'm paying with them to get workers at the polls to push their cars as well as mine. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do. If you're, if you're at the top of Colonel, you take care of the captains. Mm -hmm. If you're at the top of the ticket, as Ted Cruz has gone down and campaigned mm -hmm. for Weber, I'm out there campaigning for the judges as well. Mm -hmm. She has a machine, and she can bring a machine out for the Democratic Party no matter what. I say we build a better machine in the Republican side to count for that. Because as Republicans, we have better machines. Mm -hmm. We play, and we play clean. And we have the most influential people here in Houston that are Republicans that we can get the vote out. And if you listen to Michael Barrett the other day, he's talking. People don't stand in line to vote for the status quo. They vote in line, stand in line to vote for a change. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're running on a record vote. And I think if you work as a team, you can go from the top of the ballot down to the bottom of the ballot and get Republicans in if we build our machine and go after it and counter what she had, what machine she supposedly has. This thing about kicking the anthill and disturbing it, well, okay, she has a machine. Everyone has a machine. Just make a bigger one. Don't be afraid of it. Because if you're afraid of it, then you get that. Because then she'll pull her machine out on the young judges if she, if she doesn't have anybody to counter up top. Mm -hmm. So that's how I look at it. Okay. Um, tell us a little <clears throat> bit about what you would do to represent this district, how you would represent it differently than it's currently being represented. Well, one of the things we've done is reached out to every aspect of the community. Not that I agree with every community organization that's out there, but we've actually made an attempt to reach out, introduce ourselves, and listen to their, what they have to say. There's 695,000 people in the district. You have to represent everybody. And the key thing is you represent, don't dictate, you work for the people. And the first thing I'm going to do is, you know, have meetings with different elected officials, whether it be Democrat or Republican, to find out how the federal government can support them. Then I'm going to start working on getting these jobs here in Houston and start selling the 18th district to let everybody know how great this is. This district was created for Barbara Jordan. And whether you're Republican or Democrat, we can all look back and say Barbara Jordan is a great stagewoman. Mm -hmm. If you listen to some of her speeches in 94, she's not like a Republican anyways. When she talks about immigration or the debt or the economy or taxes, she sounds like a Republican. And I'm going to fashion myself to be as good of a state's person as Barbara Jordan was, if not better. And I'm going to represent the people. I'm for the people. And by the way, you guys won't be seeing me on camera all the time. I'm the guy behind the camera. Mm -hmm. Because you, if you're just going out for, for photo ops, it's a photo op. The real work gets done behind closed doors. You roll your sleeves up. You sit down with the other side of the aisle and you start negotiating how to get good legislation passed. Ted Poe said, look back in history, all good legislation, legislation was bipartisan. All bad legislation was partisan. And the way you don't lose the principles, don't violate the principles, but you can work with them. When I was in Afghanistan, I had the Pakistans on this side of the table, the Afghans on this side of the table. I sat here and each Sunday we had to negotiate how to solve issues. And every Sunday we walked up with like one solution we, sometimes a compromise, sometimes it was a directive, but we sat there until we came up with one solution to help the people on the Afghan Pakistan war. Same thing in Congress. You gotta sit there and behind closed doors, work, make burn the midnight oil to get it done so we can help the people of Houston. You mentioned borders in Afghanistan, and of course border security here in the United States is one of our critical issues. Uh, Ted Poe, who you've mentioned, has yes. some very strong ideas about using the National Guard and using a lot of the resources that are mm -hmm. coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq, reconfiguring those vehicles and equipment to 
serve on the borders. Would you support a program like that? Oh yes, and matter of fact, I've been talking about that. Since I worked the border there, I mean, I, the aerostat, which is this balloon we had, we had raid towers, we had backscatter machines, we had hide machines. All these things that we used on the border to secure the border mm -hmm. are in warehouses now. Mm -hmm. Those need to be put down on the southern border. And now using technology to help enforce the border. Uh, now using the National Guard and the reserves, uh, active army, I may differ a little bit there because now when you start putting armed forces and militarizing your border, and you have border guards, I mean, I think of border guards, I think of East Germany, North Korea, I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't like that. But there is a way you can use the National Guard to supplement and help out on a technical aspect for the law enforcement there. But once you bring this technology in, you're now working smarter. Mm -hmm. And if you're working smarter, don't work, don't work harder, work smarter. We have technology that can mount to the border. You have this, uh, what we call in the Army, a defense in depth. And the same thing on the border, you have to have a depth of technology and security. Mm -hmm. And it's tied together. So if you have all this technology out there monitoring, you can have reaction forces that can move at a moment's notice to intercept anything. Because the key thing is, we have to stop the crime. We have to stop the miscreants. We have to stop the criminals, the violence, and the human trafficking from coming across that border. And right now, Houston is one of the top hubs for human trafficking, and the 18th district is the top hub in Houston for human trafficking. And I'll be working with whoever becomes sheriff of Harris County at this race mm -hmm. and Ted Poe to get legislation passed and get programs in place so we can identify, rescue, and treat those victims of human trafficking, mm -hmm. stop it on the border, and then prosecute those uh, suspects that are doing it. You know, Houston is one of the major hubs of, of human trafficking, and uh, uh, Lewis Guthrie, who's running for sheriff, yes. and Robert Talton, who's running for county attorney, both of those offices would be very involved oh, yes. in attacking those issues. And it's a, a great opportunity for them to have more federal assistance from Correct. here at Stanford. I know Congressman Poe is very aware and has made several statements mm -hmm. on human trafficking as well. Um, the FBI has actually been uh, getting in the way of prosecution Correct. and human trafficking in, in Harris County in particular, and that's something that needs right. to stop. Yeah, and in the Army, we realized this back in the Bison era of how human trafficking was going on. The military started changing its rules when we get deployed overseas and how to identify and we train people on, on it, and we changed some of our tactics from the law enforcement aspect to identify and arrest the suspects and treat the victims. One of the things is crime goes across jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. And so you have the sheriff, hopefully it's gonna be Lewis, and then you have um, Lewis Guthrie for sheriff. Mm -hmm. And then you have the constables, you know, got Hickman, you got mm -hmm. Cagle out here, you got, then you have HPD, and it crosses lines. Mm -hmm. But law enforcement has stopped up that jurisdictional line. But the federal government has bigger jurisdictions. I worked on the uh, South Texas Counterterrorism Task Force. With it. As an FBI task force, we brought all the other law enforcement agencies in. Same thing here. Mm -hmm. At the federal level, bring the FBI in so they can monitor and coordinate and do it as a the whole area, the whole region. Not just Houston, but go all the way down to the border so we can stop the network. And as the FBI says, it's money, about the money, the money, the money. Follow the money and you can stop these traffickings. And if you tie in the security of the border, increase the law enforcement, support it with FBI and other Justice Department assets, you now can take down these smuggling networks that bring young women to this country for despicable things and take them down and rescue these women and get them mm -hmm. treated. So yes, I'm going to be working with Ted Poe to get that legislation in and get the FBI to help and not hinder. The federal government should always be in a supporting role, helping, not hindering. Well, they've certainly been hindering a lot lately. Um, the election is Tuesday. Yes. And uh, I know you've got your people out working the polls and, yes. and doing a great job out there. And uh, early voting has been incredible. We've oh, got a massive it. turnout. Yeah. But I would like to encourage everyone, if you haven't voted, of course, get out and vote on Tuesday. But if you have voted, find every one of your neighbors, every one of your friends who has not voted yet. Mm -hmm and get them to, to the polls because Correct. we've got to not just win these elections, we've got to send a message that Correct. the Democrat socialist agenda is not acceptable. Yeah. The Democrats need to go back and retool their their issues, philosophies, because they are out of touch with the mainstream America. Right. And we can send that message right. by electing you to the Congress yes, by Sheila Jackson Lee and voting our straight Republican ticket. Yes, and one of the things about getting people to vote, one of the things Sheila Jackson Lee's machine does is drives vans around and pick people up. 
us Republicans, we have friends. Ask your friend if you can drive them to the poll. If you already voted, go talk to five of your friends and say, hey, can I give you a ride to the poll? There's nothing wrong with you giving somebody a ride who's a friend to the poll. Encourage them to get to the poll. Give them a ride. If you know someone, help them out. And if you want to know more about our campaign, it's seansiebert.com. That's S-E-A-N-S-E-I, B as in boy, E-R-T.com. And my campaign manager has a slogan called $18 for the 18th district, you have an 18-year incumbent. And so donations of $18 are always encouraged. Well, Colonel, thank you again for your service and your willingness to get out and, and try to serve your country again. Well, thank I look you. look forward to your victory on Tuesday. Yes. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you.